Hello. So last week we talked about the advantages to a wired camera system over a Wi-Fi camera system, and actually some of the pros and cons to both. And so then we got some questions and comments on that video, and we thought we'd do a little deeper dive into wired camera systems. We've talked a lot about Apple HomeKit Secure, and we've talked about Google Home, and I just don't even want to talk about Amazon, but we've talked a lot about those. So I'm going to do a little deeper dive on a wired camera system and what exactly that is. Let's get started. What up, everybody? It's George Langevier with Silver Amor Surveillance. Here on the channel, we talk tech and we talk security. Today, we're talking a little bit more about security. Last week, we posted a video on the advantages to a, of a wired camera system over a Wi-Fi camera system and what that meant. I'm not going to go into details about the pros and cons of both of those. Go back and check out our last video. But we did get some questions on what is a wired camera system. You hear us talking about Apple HomeKit Secure Video and Apple or Google Home and even Amazon cameras and all that. that those are Wi-Fi cameras. So we really haven't talked much more about wired camera systems, and that's what we're going to do today. So what is a wired camera system? That means that there's a wire from a camera back to a DVR or an NVR. So you got a straight home run from the camera back to a box, and the box is kind of the brains of the operation. When you're talking about wired camera systems, there's two different types of technology. There's what's called HDTVI, and there's what's called IP, and there are some others, but for your general consumer, those are the two you want to shop for, HDTVI or IP. And what does that mean? Well, in the world of surveillance, there's HDTVI has basically replaced what used to be analog. Analog was a very stable way of looking at cameras, but it was kind of uh, like watching an old tube TV compared to an HDTV. And back in the day, IP, which stands for Internet Protocol, was the way you got HD. It ran with a Cat5 cable or Cat5e cable. Analog cameras ran with a coax cable. So the, you know, the differences were the cable and the quality of video. And IP could give you some more advanced analytics and that kind of thing. Well, slowly but surely, for all the buildings in the world that had coax cable ran, there had to be a new solution to where we didn't have to rip all that out and run Cat5 cable for an IP system. So slowly but surely, we developed this HDTVI technology, which kind of caught up to IP, and it's a way to use that coax but still get high-definition video. So in today's society, you still got IP and you still got HDTVI. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of those? Well, HDTVI runs back to a DVR, a digital video recorder, also called a hybrid, hybrid video recorder, because you can get some systems that actually do a little bit of HDTVI and IP, but that's a little more advanced. We're not going to talk about that. But sometimes you'll hear HVR, and we're talking about the HDTVI side on that. So a digital video recorder is the brains of the operation and, you know, it receives the camera signal and that's where you can set up things like motion and, and all your kind of analytics or your recording settings. Yeah, there's some, um, you know, settings on the camera itself, like the night vision, the resolution and that kind of thing. But the DVR is kind of what controls all that. Then on the IP side, you've got IP cameras running back to an NVR and those are ran back with a Cat5 or Cat5e cable. And so really, in, in today's world, it's just a difference in cable because HDTVI has kind of caught up to IP as far as resolution goes. The only thing IP still has an advantage over is some of the analytics. You can get a little more crazy with analytics, especially on the business side of things. Like you can do people counting in a retail store. You can do heat mapping and all this advanced technology. But really in the residential side of things, which is what we cater these videos for, there's really not much difference anymore. Maybe a little edge on the IP side for analytics, but HD can go up to 4K, which is the highest resolution you can get on a camera now, just like IP can. So it's caught up in resolution. It's caught up in night vision, all the basic features you want for a house. So why would you pick one over the other? Well, IP can be a little more expensive, and it's because of those analytics. Now, for your typical owner, homeowner, now me personally, I would pick HDTVI. And it's, you know, I'm an old school crook catcher. I used to catch this stuff. I was in the trenches with this stuff. HDTVI just gives you a little more stable connection because that old analog connection, you know, maybe the resolution wasn't the greatest back in the day, but it was a real stable connection. Running over that coax 
when you see video on a video camera or a security camera, you're actually, you know, you see a car passing by, you see a car passing by. You see a person waving their hands, they're waving their hands. So it's a nice steady signal over that coax cable. On the IP side of things, you've got to consider your internet, your bandwidth, because basically the more IP cameras you add to a network, because Cat5 has ran over a network, you can bog down your system and you got to worry about bandwidth and all these other considerations. And so when you, when you install, let's say, a bunch of 4K cameras on a normal house and you don't have the internet to support all that bandwidth, you might not be able to use those 4K cameras at 4K, whereas on the HDTVI side, it's just a straight up connection. You don't have to worry about bandwidth and all that. 4K is 4K. So George, with the IP, with that bandwidth concern, can that interrupt what you might be watching or even what might be recording? Yes, well, it can ghost and you can get latency. So basically back in the day in my old loss prevention uh, career, go ahead back and watch some of our shoplifter stories. When I was watching some thief put something in their pocket, with that analog signal, even though it wasn't as clear, what I saw is what I got. Somebody putting something in their pocket, that was it. So even though IP was available to us, I preferred the analog system because we didn't have to worry about the ghosting and the latency. And what does that mean? It means that on IP, if you don't have the, the network to support some of these high-resolution cameras, so let's say you're watching a car, you'll see it here, and then all of a sudden it'll be over here. And it's kind of the same thing when you look at these Wi-Fi cameras. You know, a lot of people complain on video doorbells that they miss stuff because all of a sudden the person was there and then they were gone. Same concept with IP. So if you've got the internet to support it, great. But to Teresa's point, you got to kind of consider that because you can get the ghosting and latency. And ghosting kind of means that you'll get like an internet trail, like it's you know kind of like pixelated behind an image. And that all depends on your network and how strong it is. If you've got a strong one, great. But if you don't, like maybe your typical homeowner, you can just kind of take all that out of the equation by just going with HDTVI. Now, one of the things I want to bring up is there are a lot of companies out there that won't even tell you HDTVI exists. They kind of look at it as the old analog, which is crap. And the only reason they're doing that is because we all make more money on the IP side. It's a much more lucrative technology. And so a lot of companies won't even tell you HDTVI exists because they want to make that margin. Now, I want to make margin too, but I'm also a small business guy and I'd rather sell you what works and you're going to tell 20 people about me and that's how I'm going to make my money than just selling you some IP thing and telling you I put in 4K cameras but actually dropping down the resolution because your network couldn't support it and some companies won't even tell you they did that. I'd rather just give you a nice, stable HDTVI signal, 4K, 5 megapixel, whatever it is, and, and then you know you're getting that resolution. Whereas with IP, with your internet, I'm telling you, there's some companies out there that will tell you you're getting one thing and then they won't. They'll drop it down because your network demands it and they won't tell you they dropped it down. So just kind of consider it. If you want to, you know, I guess IP could kind of be considered top of the line because of the analytics. And if you just, you know, if you're that IT type person, you've already got a network, you've got a, a server room with a switch in your house and there are some of those houses out there. Then yeah, maybe you want to might want to go IP if you're really the analytic person, you're kind of a high tech person, and you really want the top of the line. Then because of those analytics, that's kind of where where IP kind of maybe still has the advantage. But if you're a typical homeowner and you just want a nice steady video from your security camera, HGTV is the way to go. It's about half the price in many cases, and in my opinion, it's better. So you're going to get a DVR or HVR, hybrid video recorder, digital video recorder. Or on the flip side, you go for the network video recorder and IP. But my advice to you as a guy that's been doing this for a long time, that's been catching crooks with this stuff, that's been in the trenches, that wants to tell you about everything that's available to you, HDTVI, give it a look. And the other cool thing about HDTVI is it'll work with old analog cameras. So let's say you've got a building or a house even, you bought a house and they've got old analog cameras there. You can just get the uh, digital video recorder or the HDTVI recorder and it will work with those old cameras. So, you know, you can kind of, you know, replace the cameras as you want, but just get the new brains of the operation to kind of give you a more updated system and then replace cameras as you go. IP on the flip side, let's say you've got some IP cameras, you kind of got to be careful because sometimes IP is proprietary and certain NVRs will only work with certain cameras whereas HDTVI is a lot more universal. 
So George, you've talked a lot about the different cabling with each choice. How does the power run in each one? That's a very good question. So a lot of people will say IP is better because it's just one uh, Cat5 cable. So Cat5 cable going from the camera back to the MVR. Well, the MVR, so one of two things are happening with IP. It's either running back to an internet switch with PoE because those cameras are powered over that Cat5 cable. So you got to have a, either a PoE switch back where somewhere in the in the loop, or some of these NVRs will actually have PoE ports on the back of them, and they will power the camera. So as far as power goes, a little bit of a less wire mess with IP. So I guess that's another advantage because you just got one Cat5 going back to either a switch or your NVR. On the coax side or on the HDTVI side, you usually run what's called a Siamese cable. Now, it's a little bulkier than a Cat5, but technically it's two cables molded together. And I'm showing you an example here. But basically, it's you know still running one cable back. But the difference is on the DVR side, you're going to have video going to your DVR, and then it's going to split off to some sort of power supply. And nowadays, it's usually a 12-volt power supply situation, which is either just a power supply that plugs into the wall, or you can get a power supply box and put it by your DVR. A little more wire mess because you've got that split from the video to the power. Whereas the IP is going to have a little cleaner install. So on that on that front, it is a little cleaner. So it kind of depends on where you're putting this and how experienced you are as far as hiding cables. But that's a very good question. So IP is powered over the internet or over the Ethernet cable or the Cat5 cable. And HDTVI is powered just with a low power cable molded together with a video cable. Good question. So, in the grand scheme of things, HDTVI is cheaper. HDTVI has a more steady signal. You don't have to worry about internet and bandwidth concerns. You can buy any resolution you want and just hook it up and it works. IP, kind of got to worry about your network and, you know, you, you know, worry about your install. But do you want the analytics or not? Like I said, just a little bit more advanced analytics. Like HDTVI is typically motion alerts line crossing, object detection, that kind of thing. But when you go to IP, you can get more facial recognition and that kind of thing. So when I say analytics, I'm talking about what the camera will actually process, what it will alert you for. So if you really want all that, maybe consider IP. But again, you're going to be paying maybe twice the price for something that's not quite as stable because you got to worry about those network restraints. So in the grand scheme of things, hopefully this kind of made that more sense. But HDTVI over IP, when you're shopping for these things, that's what you want to consider. You know, when you're talking about the NVRs and the DVRs, like Alibi, the brand we sell, go back and check out that last video I talked a little bit about Alibi. They look exactly the same. The only difference is the connections on the back of the box. So, you know, there's not much difference. The cameras look a lot. You can see the different styles. You know, typically there's these turret domes, there's the bullet style, and then there's what's called a PTZ which is pan, tilt, zoom. Those are the kind that spin around and zoom that we used to use in my loss prevention days. I will give you a, a word of advice on those. A lot of people want those because they think that functionality is cool. But if you don't have a loss prevention person sitting there controlling them, because back when I was doing that, those were priceless to us because we were basically like hunting for people. It was like hunting and fishing for people. I say that all the time, but we were there controlling them and that made them very useful. But your typical homeowner that's not constantly sitting there stalking everybody, those cameras are kind of a waste of money. Just to give you an example, like a basic HD TVI camera, you can get for like a hundred bucks. Some, some are even like 50 to hundred. You go to those PTZs, the starting price is usually about seven, 800 bucks. And that's just for the starters. You go on the IP side, forget about it. Even more than that. So again, you've got turrets, you got also there's domes, and then you got bullet style, which I'm kind of showing you the difference here. Um, and then you got PTZ cameras. But again, before you spend all this money on PTZ cameras, just think about it. Are you really gonna use that functionality? Because the thing about a PTZ camera is when you're not using it, it's always kind of panning. And if something happens over here and the camera's looking over there, you just miss the incident. Whereas if you have a stationary camera, the kind of cameras that just look at one thing, if you have more of those, just looking at exactly what you want, you're not going to miss anything. So now if this is a chance, if you are a business person and you're looking at this for business purposes, 
a PTZ might be for you because you might have somebody to use that more. But if you're a typical homeowner, I'm telling you, PTZs are just flushing money down the toilet. So again, that's kind of the styles you're talking about. So you're looking at DVRs, NVRs, dome cameras, turret dome cameras, bullet cameras, PTCs. Got any questions about all that? Shoot me a comment. But uh, just kind of wanted to give you a little more deep dive on what we talked about last week. Again, hopefully you like this video. If you do, please hit smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. We'll be back for more security and tech talk. Can't wait. Appreciate you being here. Till next time, peace and love.